hey guys welcome back to my channel i know it has been such a long time since i uploaded a new video and i'm sorry your girl has just been so busy a lot has been going on in my life honestly speaking um you know i picked up some new hobbies like new businesses and just just new things and it's just been occupying me and youtube has kind of been suffering for that but i apologize i'm going to try to be consistent it's not easy but i am really really going to try anyways let's apologize again for this makeup because today i just i wanted to film this video without makeup by the end of the day i decided to do something because like today's topic is one that is very important to me and a lot of people actually and for those, those of you that don't know october is not just breast cancer awareness month which is what every other person is talking about you know like i've seen a lot of posts on breast cancer and how to check yourself and you know all the things related to breast cancer but a lot of people don't actually know that october is actually also um pregnancy and child loss awareness month so i'm just basically here to share my story because pregnancy and child loss is actually very important and a very very common occurrence it's something that just happens a lot but not a lot of people talk about it so i just thought to share my story with you guys and hopefully help one or two people in the process so if you want to just hear me out just make sure to keep on watching so basically this month is pregnancy and infant loss i'm sorry my intro i've been i was saying child loss but anyways it's pregnancy and infant loss awareness month and the particular day is observed is on the 15th of october um pregnancy and infant loss remembrance day is a day of remembrance for pregnancy loss and infant death which includes or however not limited to miscarriages stillbirth sids um, and death of a newborn. So yeah, according to statistics, one in four pregnancies end in miscarriage, which might seem small to some people, but that's actually a whole lot of miscarriages going on. Literally one in four, two in eight, three in 12. So by the time you multiply it, you realize that every month thousands and thousands and probably hundreds of thousands if not more people are having miscarriages but people are not really talking about it and also when it comes to like infant loss i know personally like two people it has affected so there is this thing called sudden infant death syndrome which is the sids that i just said now um it basically is just basically when you you like you can keep your baby down to sleep and you come back and your baby's dead and you don't even know what caused it sometimes it might be suffocation sometimes it could be anything it could be them choking on their food like is nothing that you caused basically so that is why it's called sudden infant death syndrome it happens to a whole lot of people and yeah this month is supposed to create awareness for all that so that is why i'm here doing this video and share my story with you guys so to get into the story my personal experience with a miscarriage yes i had a miscarriage but um that was in uh, like ending of 2014 right before i got pregnant for my first son so this has been a long time if you're close to me you already know this it's not something i hide it's something i happily share with people because like i say i wouldn't have it any other way right now like i will gladly go through that miscarriage again to have the two beautiful kids that i have right now even though at the moment i didn't feel that way but right now i'm over it and this is how i feel about it so anyways getting into the story um this was like towards the ending of 2014 um in november yeah in november i found out i was pregnant the thing is um, i was so naive i don't know i should just yeah i was so naive and um even though like i missed my period and all that i i took a pregnancy test when it happened and then i was already yeah i was married like i've done my introduction and all those things i was just waiting for my for my white wedding Anyways, um, even though I, I took a pregnancy test when I missed my period, like I saw two lines, but one was very dark and one was very faint. So I just told myself, ah, okay, this means I'm not pregnant because that was my first ever pregnancy test. So I was like, this means I'm not pregnant. And I just went ahead and just carried on with my life. I was doing things I would normally do. You know, I was running errands and I was getting ready for my wedding then. So it was very, it was a hectic period in my life so i just carried on with my life sincerely not actually knowing that i was pregnant then about two three weeks later still nothing that was when i now thought okay there is 
there's a chance that maybe I'm pregnant or because I've never experienced like that kind of thing before in my life I've never had a late period that late or just anything of such so I took another test and I had to snap the picture and send it to my friend and then she looks at the test and just goes Nello, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, the, the second line is still fit. I mean, if I knew much about pregnancy tests, at that point, I should know that something was actually wrong because it's been like three weeks since the first test and still the second line was still very faint, which means that your numbers are not adding up. Anyways, she told me I was pregnant, so the next day I went to the hospital and confirmed the pregnancy. And yeah, we were so happy. Like, we didn't plan the pregnancy. We thought we we're being careful, but hey, we were so happy and um, we called our family we told our families like we're just really happy about the whole pregnancy funny story like deviating a little bit from my story that particular friend I'm not going to call her name if she's watching this video she'll know herself that particular friend I called at that moment I was calling her telling her I was pregnant she was actually going through a miscarriage which she told me nothing about you know she told me nothing about it till like a few weeks later when i called her to tell her about my own miscarriage then she tells me that she was actually going through a miscarriage then so i really don't know why like people don't feel comfortable talking about like miscarriage infant loss and things like that like it's really a common occurrence we should talk about it more yeah we were so happy we carried on you know things are just going fine i guess regular till all of a sudden when i was like 10 weeks almost 10 weeks um i started like not long after i actually found out i was pregnant actually i started um spotting and you know it was like blood clots something like that i remember me and my husband were so worried it was in the night it was in the night this happened so we went to the hospital that night but the gynecologist was not around it was just the um, the uh, kids doctor what's it called i don't know he was the only person around so he couldn't really do much for us so we had to come back the next morning so when i went back the next morning um you know they carried out a scan they were like okay they can clearly see a sack which is where your baby is supposed to grow but the sack is empty but obviously it was a bit too early that i should wait a little bit um okay no i think this was when i was like eight weeks or nine weeks they were like i should wait a while before you know like confirming that i've actually lost the pregnancy so at that point i still had a little bit of hope and um yeah after like a few days i started that sp spotting stopped then after like a few days it started again so i had to go back to the hospital and like different hospitals i went to like three different hospitals and to cut the long story short each of them scanned me and told me that um you know there's no baby inside there it's just an empty sack that i probably lost this baby a long time ago maybe when the baby was even still forming or when the baby was like four five or six weeks that right now there's nothing there i should just expect to miscarry the first doctor that told me this was like my main hospital where i had already gone to register for antenatal um when he told me like and my husband wasn't even there at that point i think he had really had to go to work that day so i had to go in by myself and i remember just weeping like i cried so much like this pregnancy wasn't planned by the end of the day once a baby is going inside you is automatically your child is your baby you want that baby so bad so i remember crying i called my husband on the phone he had to leave whatever it is he was doing like i feel like he left to work because he felt like we had hope you know we had hope so at that point that was when we knew that all hopes like literally gone and he started rushing back to me um I, like i literally couldn't even drive i remember calling my sister my sister was even crying on the phone with me i think her daughter was sick in the hospital then she i remember she was in the hospital when i called her and you know she was crying she was so sad like uh just like uh like i just i just it was just a very very sad day but that's even nothing to compare to what happened later anyways um my cousin had to come to stay with me to help me out with some things and um yeah it was just me and my husband and my husband had to be going to work and i didn't want to be alone so my sister had her kids and stays very far away so my cousin that was the closest to me had to come to stay with me and then um okay because my wedding was coming up like literally in few weeks in like at the point this thing happened i think my child was like few days later maybe like less than a week or like a week later so the doctor was like is either i let the miscarriage just happen or 
um, I'll get a manual vacuum aspiration, which is where they just vacuum the pregnancy out and you're not wor and you don't have to be worried of like cramps and just pain and just like miscarrying for days because apparently it can carry on for a long period of time so we chose the option of the um, vacuum aspiration because our wedding was coming up and you know i didn't want anything to disrupt that anyways um that day came i went in when i went in at first i was fine i was just like you know what what, ha what has happened has already happened there's nothing i can do about it god has a reason for everything i'm a strong believer in god has a reason for everything and looking at now he definitely had a reason for that you know so i went in and um i was like can my husband stay with me the doctor was just like this is not a sight you want your husband to see like this is really not a sight and if you really think about it it's not childbirth it's child loss so at the end of the day he waited for me outside so they put me on that the procedure took about like 15 to 20 minutes i know that when i woke up again um i just started weeping you guys i'm laughing now but at that moment i was on that bed it was like literally one of the worst experiences of my life i was crying so bad um i was just like oh, where is my husband i need my husband where is my husband i was screaming the nurses were trying to clean me up before like telling him to call me i was like no i need my husband now so he came he was actually the one helping to to clean me up because i think blood was just gushing out like i don't want to get into too much information anyways um he now called my sisters on the phone and my brothers were just all on conference and you know they were just trying to tell me that everything will be fine i was just like they took my baby like they took my baby <laughs> why i was asking my husband why did you let them take my baby oh you guys <sighs> anyways i was like why did you let them take my baby like they took my baby that was my baby like i was crying so my sisters did their best to calm me down they told my dad what had happened and my dad called me on the phone and you know he was just like this is the devil trying to make you not to enjoy your wedding coming up is fine um you guys are going to have so many more children like this is nothing you know and at that point sincerely i wasn't even worried about taking in again but later i found out that it's actually a worry people have that after they have a miscarriage or go through this like vacuum aspiration they have complications getting pregnant but luckily that wasn't the case for me anyways um yeah so that day came and passed i was recovering at home because it's you're still going to bleed like you gave birth so literally like throughout my wedding period i'm still bleeding till i think to the new year actually for like two weeks or something that was how everything happened the doctor was like we should try and wait three months before trying again so that my cycle will get back to normal you know so you see your period like once like tw twice or three times to know that everything is fine and we're like okay fine i mean it's fine we're not going to prevent pregnancy but then again we're not actively trying to get pregnant and the child came and passed the wedding was like few weeks few weeks later after that and um, this happened in december and yeah the 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 manner vacuum aspiration happened in december in january i saw my period it came like one month after the manner vacuum aspiration so everything was like on track and then um you know i had my wedding later in february like beginning and um and like few like one week or a few days later i think it was a day to, a day before valentine okay like you know the funny thing here throughout my wedding period i wasn't even drinking or doing anything of such because i'm just like i just want my body to be right if i'm going to get pregnant i want everything to be in place and then i did my wedding and um and like a few days later sha me and my husband were just like let's buy a pregnancy test and take a pregnancy test and see and then we took a pregnancy test and it was negative so i'm just like ah, it's fine next time then we're hanging out one day and he was just like oh we just passed the clinic and he was just like let's just stop by and just do a blood test just to be sure you know there's no harm in being sure and we stopped by took a blood test i remember just waiting in the waiting room two of us and you know after some time they called me and told me that my results was ready i picked it up it was inside an envelope and we just sat down back in the waiting room we didn't even step out so we're just like let if anything let us see here for me to open the envelope it was just boldly written positive i'm like no freaking way like this can't be happening right now i just remember our excitement we started jumping this was the day before valentine so this was literally like one week after our wedding 
so meaning like i was like a week pregnant for the wedding or something like that anyways i remember we both started jumping and the the doctors and nurses they started congratulating us telling us like happy early valentine and stuff like that like we were so freaking happy but the thing that comes with like losing a pregnancy before is paranoia like i was so paranoid throughout my next pregnancy and because i had already had a miscarriage I was put on progesterone for the first 12 weeks of my next pregnancy. So once I found out I was pregnant, um, I got like when I go back home, not long after that, I went and registered. And once they looked at my history, the doctor just put me on progesterone, which is supposed to help because one thing that causes miscarriage could be low hormon hormonal levels. Yeah, something like that. So progesterone is basically like a hormone. So it was basically to balance up things in there. So today I don't really get the, the maths behind it, but basically prevention is better than cure. So they put me on progesterone for that. And even when I got pregnant for Kaito, I was on progesterone for the first 12 weeks as well. So for Kaito, I didn't even wake once I just found out I was pregnant, straight to the hospital. I just I asked for the progesterone. I'm like, just give it to me. It doesn't hurt because like pregnancy loss is not something I ever want to go through again. It wasn't it wasn't funny that is um basically my uh my story with uh child loss with pregnancy loss um it happened a long time ago like uh four years ago yeah four years ago now and it's something i've totally gotten over but i just thought to share this story because I found out that a lot of people hide the fact that they miscarry or feel ashamed to say that they miscarried or just don't feel comfortable talking about it. It's really not a big deal, you guys. It happens to one in four pregnancies and it can even happen to one person multiple times. It doesn't mean anything is wrong with you. And in my case, I miscarried and literally got pregnant the next month. So even though I did the manual vacuum aspiration, which is something else that a lot of people were scared about nothing like everything everything is fine at the most part i try hard i try harder not to get pregnant than to actually get pregnant you know so that is my story another thing i forgot to mention is the fact that when you have a miscarriage it is not your fault i remember there was a time i started thinking that okay this miscarriage that happened was actually my fault if i had known i was pregnant i would have taken things easy i wouldn't have done this i wouldn't have drank this glass of wine i wouldn't have climbed this flight of stairs i wouldn't have like i remember somebody i know then i won't really call her friend someone i know then made actually made a statement one time that something like it was my fault that this happened i remember crying so bad that period and what you guys should know is if this happened to you or if it ever happens to you it's not your fault like even the doctors will tell you a million and one times most times miscarriages happen because there was a defect during implantation or when the baby was forming or something like that it really has nothing to do with you as a mother or the father in most cases obviously some cases there are some other medical reasons attached to it maybe like family history or stuff like that but for the most part it's nobody's fault so don't let anybody tell you that having a miscarriage is your fault if you are taking care of yourself better this wouldn't have happened no it's not true for the most part it's not your fault so if anybody's trying to tell you that slap the person if you can if you cannot just kick the person out because that you don't need that kind of negativity especially when you're going through something as serious as a miscarriage so anyways guys that is my story with like um a miscarriage i hope this story was able to help one or two people if you've had a miscarriage in the past or infant loss or anything of such and you want to share with me please do so in the comment section down below i would love to read uh, your stories and if not i hope that this was i mean an educative video for you to watch um yeah i was just really really happy filming this video because i just know that some people actually would need to hear what i have to say in this video and yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you have not subscribed guys and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys